Hello crafty friends, today I'm sharing with you 10 cards, actually 11, that I made with the August card kit of the month called Butterfly Wishes. Lovely kit that we've got to play with this month. Okay, straight into card number one. I've taken the stripy background paper here and I've cut it slightly smaller than our card base. I'm going to stick that down with our double-sided tape. I've then cut another rectangle of the pretty green pattern paper we have and that's slightly smaller again and that's going to be a mat for the uh, next layer which is a pretty pink and gold starburst pattern that I've cut with one of the Spellbinders dies and that's going to be the focal point for our die cut frame that's in the kit and I have cut the frame out of some of our gold mirror cardstock. I'm then taking the little bicycle ephemera piece and I'm gonna pop that up on some of the foam tape that we're given and you can see there I like to put lots on I want to know that it's not going to sag or droop or bend in any places and I'm just testing out the rest of my layout there and I've got the hot air balloon and I've just brought in some slightly larger uh, foam tapes that is also um, slightly thinner than the foam tape in our kit. Into the centre of the frame I'm adding in one of the tickets. Now I am also then going to take another sentiment strip I'm going to cover up part of the sentiment on the ticket and replace it with the sentiment on this uh, fishtail banner. And I've popped up the fishtail banner with the same um, depth of tape that I've used on the hot air balloon. Now I'm just simply going to go through, take off all the backing on the um, little push bike and the hot air balloon so I can then place those nice and securely onto my card front and I do like to add a little bit of glue it gives you a little bit of time to lift it back up if you don't get your piece quite in the right place and I also then know it's really going to stick I'm pulling in the three of the stars that coordinate with the colors I'm using on the card and I'm going to place those onto my hot air balloon it just gives another little focal point and a little bit more detail to a um, very simple element that the hot air balloon is. Just spreading out that glue with my finger there. Good tool the finger for little jobs like that. I'm then going to come in with my Nouveau Crystal Drops and this one is um, clear with glitter. And I'm going to go over some of the details on the card just to give another texture as well as a little bit more um, dimension. So I'm giving the stars a bit of a sparkle treatment there with the Nuva drop. Just trying to make sure I get it on all the points but not flowing over onto the actual balloon itself. I'm then going to add the sparkles to the push bike. So I've added it onto the flower basket and the seat. I then decided, hey, why not? Let's add some onto the ticket as well and make the U stand out so that the sentiment will read as I want it to. I then will add some more of the sparkles to the tires and then that should be just about finished I believe and you can see I'm just trying to not get the Nouveau drops anywhere other than on the tires or the details that I want and I've also popped a little bit more onto the hot balloon just so it all matches in and there's card number one finished Card number two, I'm taking the background paper with the little pink dandelions and some foliage on, and that's going to be the background for my card. So 
Then once I've attached that, I've cut myself a cloudy scallopy border uh, out of the pink ombre paper from our paper pad. And I'm going to carefully place that onto my card front. And because the paper is very fine, you do have to be careful not to uh, have it bunch up or uh, crease where you don't want any. Then I'm going to fill the center of my frame with this pretty scalloped paper. And that's going to form the backdrop for the sentiment. Now I've taken the uh, sentiment from the ephemera pack and I've used my banner die there to cut it into a fishtail banner and I'm popping that up on some white foam as well. Now I'll let that sit for a minute and the glue can set and then I'm ready to pop that onto my card base. Just applying a generous amount of glue there for the foam to make sure we stick. And that's going to go in the center of my frame. And I'll apply some weight to make sure the foam will attach firmly. And then I'm taking our chipboard owl and I'm going to place that over top of the fishtail banner with the sentiment. I did have some trouble with some of the chipboard pieces wanting to um, come unstuck or not um, come off the paper correctly and uh, peel so I've had to glue that back onto um, the backing of the owl. So I'm placing some foam squares just on the one side of the owl to make sure when I place it over the banner it's nice and level. So I'll firmly place that there. I've also cut out uh, some stars using the dies in our kit and I'm going to attach those around my card and I liked to bring in the uh, gold stars just to um, highlight or bring out some of the gold that's on the ephemera pieces and the chipboard pieces just uh, it gives that continuity uh, in the colors so gently applying a little glue on there we don't want too much that it seeps out and um, blurs or muddies up our uh, shine from our gold foil. I'm going to use a glue dot to go in the center of my uh, sentiment at the top and I've tied myself a little pink bow out of pink organza ribbon and that then finishes off that card. For card number three, I've taken these two coordinating papers, one with the cute pussy cats with wings and the other with the pink and white background. Now I've cut those pieces of paper so they will cover half the card front each. So just adhering those down, making sure I've lined up my corners and my edges. I've then taken some of the black starry paper and cut a semicircle shape out of the paper as well as out of the uh, white foam you can see me applying glue to. I will put my paper onto the foam so we've got some dimension. Then before I attach the foam piece, I've taken a sentiment strip and I'm going to glue that onto some gold cardstock so that we've got a nice uh, gold frame that ties nicely with the gold writing on the uh, sentiment strip. So I'll give that a second to um, dry and then I'll use my paper trimmer to uh, get a nice clean thin edge around my sentiment. Then I'm just working out my positioning there. So I will then glue on my little sentiment to the top left of my card front because I'm going to apply the major uh, decorative part of my card to the bottom uh, right hand side. So there's that foam piece I prepared earlier. I've got my little kitty cat there on the moon which matches back to that pattern paper on the left. I'm not going to pop up 
the moon and cat because it's already popped up on the starry black paper there. I'm going to add a second sentiment to my card because I think it ties in really nicely with the sentiment at the top of the card. So this one you'll see has got some foam strips there to keep it level with the black paper and then I will attach it over the um, oh, overlapping the black semicircle. I've brought in some Spellbinders gold pearls and I'm just going to have a sprinkling of those around the card just to um, put in a little bit more sparkle and it just draws the eye around the card as well. And that will finish my card. I think it's very cute with those cats. Card four, I'm bringing in the very small butterfly background paper and I've cut that to cover the whole of the card front. It's a very busy pattern, so I'm going to break it up with some of this white with black spot paper. I've cut the black and white spotty paper to be around a third of the card front. I'm then bringing in the sentiment um, from our ephemera pack and I've used my corner chomper just to round out the corners. I've also cut a piece of the dark pink pattern paper that looks like a map um, and I've cut that slightly larger than my uh, sentiment so that it frames it and I've also used my corner chomper on that to give, give it the rounded corners. I'm now bringing in my Love From Lizzie gold peel offs and I'm using the thickest width here and I'm just going to use the small pieces to put behind my sentiment there. No need to use a full strip. I'll then peel off my tape from my uh, focal sentiment and place that centered to my card front. You can see I've got the little girl with butterfly wings. I want to add her to my card as well. So I'm just checking that I've allowed the uh, right amount of room for her to then be positioned on top of my sentiment. So I'm not popping up my little girl on foam and nor have I done that with my sentiment. I'll place my little girl in the bottom right corner and then I'm going to do something a little bit different with the um, acetate butterflies that we have. But before I do that, I'm going to add one of our little pink butterflies to the top corner. So I'm going to take just the very top layer of our acetate butterfly and I'm going to cut both of the wings off the body of the butterfly. And I will keep the body of the butterfly to use as well. I'm taking each of the wings and I'm just going to um, put a crease or a fold right close to where they join the body. I'm then going to take my glue, add some glue down the center of the um, butterfly wings on the little girl. And I need to hold that wing in place for a couple minutes until the glue attaches. I'll also do exactly the same thing with the right side wing. Hold it in place till the glue attaches. And then I've got two pop-up butterfly wings on my little girl. There is the center of the butterfly, acetate butterfly. And I'm going to add that to the middle of the pink ephemera piece. And then we've got a nice shiny black middle there on it. So that is that card finish and I'm just showing you the dimension that you can get from those acetate butterfly wings and they do fold down nicely to go in the mail. Card number five, I've created my own top folding card base with the cream cardstock in our kit. I've cut myself a piece of the black background floral and it's around two to three millimeters smaller than the card front. I'll just attach that onto my card trying to get a nice even border all the way around. I've cut a smaller rectangle of the gold dandelion paper 
and I'm going to attach that towards the left hand side of my card front just making sure that's nicely attached. I've then cut a, two different doilies using Coco and Reno doily um, dies and then I've split those in half so that I can use those to cover the left hand side of my card. So I'll just attach the um, smaller doily with the heart detail on top of the gold card there and that just tones down and um, or tames the gold sparkle from the um, background doily there a little so that it doesn't take your eye or all the attention away from the rest of the card. I'll apply my glue carefully. I don't want it seeping out onto the gold mirror card stock. It does make it dull. Um, you can remove it, but I prefer to uh, get it right the first time if I don't have to um, try and get it off later when I've made a mess. I've then taken this pretty little girl from the ephemera pack, but I wanted um, just the black outline like a cameo without any of the um, white edges showing. And I'm going to pop her up on some of our um, dimensional foam squares from our kit and she's going to go in the center of those two half doilies. For my sentiment, I've chosen beautiful in every way and that's getting popped up on some foam squares that are slightly thinner than the um, foam in our kit. So I'll just make sure that's attached there. To go along with that beautiful in every way, I'm taking our three chipboard uh, tags and I'm going to attach that to the top. So it will say magical, timeless and special and then beautiful in every way. Now I'm peeling off my stickers and as you can see that backing tape there just wouldn't stay attached so I've peeled it off and I'm going to glue it directly down to the card front. So that's the timeless banner and you can see the colours are perfect with the colours in the papers that I've chosen there as well. That third banner again, the backing sticky paper peeled off and I've just glued it on there. So now I'm just making sure I've got those banners as straight as I possibly can. I have my Spellbinders Fashion Gold uh, Pearls again and I'm going to attach those into the holes of the tags but to make sure they stay there nice and firmly I'm also adding glue into um, those holes and um, around the top edges to make sure the pearls will stay uh, in place for a very long time rather than getting bumped or rubbed off. So that is those all attached. Now I thought it would be nice if the uh, lady on the side of the card had a little bit of gold jewellery as well. So she's getting some of the very smallest gold um, pearls placed around her neck so she's wearing a elegant gold choker. Once that's finished I'm then going to bring in the uh, sparkle brush there, a Spectrum Noir Clear Sparkle brush and I'm just putting some sparkle on top of the flowers in her hair and that is card number five finished. For card six, I've chosen a peach, pink, black and white colour scheme. And you can see the paper I've chosen is the large rose background. And then I'm going to use the black and white script paper to then layer on top there and that's going to be the background for the ephemera pieces that I'm going to add. I've taken the white and gold foil tag from our ephemera pack and I'm going to glue that onto the black and white script paper. I won't have 
um, any gap at the top it will go all the way to the top edge but I did want to make sure I had a thin black border down the left hand side of that banner I've got my sentiment here which is beauty is all around and I'm popping that up on some foam squares and placing that in the center of my uh, fishtail banner tag I've then taken some of the white and gold music paper and that's going to layer on top of my sentiment but underneath the bird cage. So I do need to make sure I've got some foam squares on the right side to keep it level with the sentiment strip. Then I'm taking my bird cage and I'm going to pop it up with some foam squares but just at the top and then the very bottom of the bird cage because it will then glue in the middle over top of the musical paper. It is important to trial the positioning of your foam tape before you peel off your backing paper for it and before you place the glue onto your ephemera piece. You want to make sure they're in the right place before you're committed to sticking it down. So you can see there I've placed that over top then I decided that I needed something to frame that black and white paper and I've brought in the peach coloured uh, Love From Lizzie wide straight um, style strips. I've got my sentiment down the bottom of my card that's popped up on some foam tape and it says filled with happiness. To that I'm then going to attach the peachy pink coloured our bird and that's going to overlap the left hand side of my sentiment. I've then tied myself another little bow out of the pink organza ribbon and I'm going to glue that to the front of the card and that will finish off that card. I'll show you as soon as the glue has set what the card looks like close up. And the dimension that you can see there. Card number seven, I have got the tone on tone blue grey butterfly paper and I've cut that slightly smaller than my card base. I'm going to apply that trying to get a nice even border around my paper. Then I've taken some of the newsprint paper and I've cut that into a small panel and that's going to go towards the bottom third of my card. Now before I attach that to my card base, I've cut some thin gold strips of cardstock and I'm going to stick that to the top and bottom edges of the newsprint. I'll just add some glue to the back of the uh, panel to make sure we've got good adhesion and I'll press that down nice and firmly just making sure any glue spots I've wiped up along the way. I've then cut a panel of the pink and black butterfly paper and I'm going to add that on top of the newsprint paper and that's going to be the um, backdrop for my focal element which is that gorgeous chipboard sentiment. I'm just going to pop that chipboard piece up on some uh, foam squares and then I'm going to attach that to the bottom right hand side of that panel. Press that down nice and firmly and then I'm going to take three of our butterflies and I've chosen two of the bluey grey coloured butterflies to match back in with the tones of the paper and then I've also chosen one of the light pink coloured butterflies and that will match back in with the pink of the um, papers that I've used as well. So just making sure I've got good pressure on those wings and making sure I've got them nice and firmly attached. I'm then taking some of our blue sequins and I'm going to make little butterfly trails for each of the three butterflies. And I've placed down little spots of glue there and then using my jewel pick 
to pick up my sequins and tap them gently onto the spots of glue. When I got to the third butterfly, I decided I might like to actually have three sequins trailing from the butterflies. So I will then go back around each of my butterflies and add on a third sequin. And there goes the last one I'm adding onto the pink butterfly there. And that is card number seven, finished with those gorgeous butterflies. For card number eight, I'm using for my very first time some foundry wax and I'm using the color called Statue. And I chose this color because I felt like it matched in much better to the metallic colors on our uh, ephemera pieces. So I am taking a little bit of the wax at a time on the end of my finger and I'm rubbing over the paper and I have embossed the black card stock with our folder of the month. So I'm learning as I go how to apply the foundry wax on there and if I put too much on my finger at a time I'm getting a big thick coverage in places and if I remember to do just place a small amount on the end of my finger at a time I get a lighter more even coating on top of the raised pattern of the embossed area. So just finishing off there, adding a little bit more to some of the areas that look like they don't have a very thick um, coverage. And once I've gone back over and used up what I have left there of the wax, I'll bring in my heat tool and we'll set that uh, foundry wax in place. It has to be heat set and when you do heat set it, it gets a most wonderful metallic shine to it. And I'm just taking my time. I don't want to spend too much time in one place. And I will flip it over just to try and um, assist with the warping. Now I've gone in with a little bit more of the wax in places where uh, there were, wasn't enough there to really show up once I had heat set it. So I'll go back over and I don't mind that it's a little splotchy in places. It just um, will balance out once I put the uh, ephemera pieces and um, other papers with it. So there we are and I'll wipe up the bit that I've got left on my non-stick mat and heat set this again. And you can see it does get a really beautiful metallic finish. So I'm going to glue this to my card base, making sure I've got plenty of glue because when you do emboss, you've got to make sure you're going to get enough of the surface that's going to be in contact with the card front. And I do add some acrylic blocks to make sure we do get good contact with the glue. I've taken a piece of the uh, gold printed paper and I've layered that onto a piece of black cardstock. I'm also going to add in a semicircle of the black card because I want to layer some dandelions onto my card front, but without having a black background behind it, they sort of disappeared or didn't really show as effectively as they could have. So here I am placing in my four dandelions and I just used a bit of low tack tape to hold them in place while I got some glue and popped that underneath the images. And that's a good way of keeping things in place and in the arrangement so you don't have to try and pick them up and turn them over, put your glue on and then turn them back over and hope everything stays in place. This way the little bit of tape does that for you. And I'll just come back and add some more glue to the bottoms of the dandelions. Now I'm going to take the gold foil dandelion paper that I've put onto a layer of black cardstock. And I'm going to attach that to over top of my dandelions there. But before I do, I want to just make sure 
that um, I'm going to have my cardstock laying nice and even by popping a little bit more um, scrap paper underneath the corners there. So I'll place it on nice and firmly, let it sit for a little while with some acrylic blocks on. Then I'm using scraps that I had previously and I've made myself a little fishtail banner. I'm popping up the top edge with a scrap of black cardstock because it's going to overlap um, the top edge there where the embossed paper doesn't sit flush with the card front. So we'll let that sit and give the glue time to set. Now I am coming in with the uh, die cut sentiment that we have in the kit and it says smile often. I've just cut each of the words three times and stacked them on top of each other. So we've got dimension and it's uh, raised um, up from the white background. That just helps it stand out from um, the rest of the black in the card. So we'll place that on in position where I'm happy. Make sure we've got good contact. I'm bringing in some pink and main gemstones just to finish off the card and these match in really nicely with the um, foundry wax that I've used and the gold colour on our ephemera pieces and pattern paper. So I've just added three of those to emphasise our dandelions and that is card number eight finished. Card number nine, I was inspired by all the moons and stars in our kit this month and I brought in a hunky-dory star covered uh, cover plate to use and I've cut that out of our black cardstock. I've brought in a piece of uh, cream and gold glitter cardstock from my stash and I'm just going to attach that to our card base. It is slightly smaller than the card front and that's because I've cut the uh, die cut cover plate slightly smaller than the card as well. So I have popped that card front up with lots of pieces of um, foam tape just so it's supported all the way through or around uh, the cover plate there. I've then cut myself a fishtail banner and I've gone around the edges with uh, Love From Lizzie thin peel-offs. I've added one of our puffy foam glitter stickers from our kit and then I've chosen this moon phase chipboard sticker and I've attached that to the top edge of my fishtail banner. I'm then going to place one of our cute cats to the card front popped up on some foam tape and that's going to sit on top of our uh, moon face chipboard sticker and then I'm taking the gold chipboard moon and I'm attaching that to the card and you can see again that I had trouble with the backing sticky backing of the chipboard stickers and I've had to glue that back on as well before attaching to the card. I am going to take some of um, a sparkle pen and just give the little pussycat a little bit more sparkle to go along with all the sparkle on the card itself. And you can see that I've chosen that glitter cardstock because I felt it went really nicely with the um, shine sticker. And that will be that card finished. I think it's very cute. Card number 10, I've taken a piece of the pink cardstock from our kit and cut it to fit a uh, card front, A2 card front. I'm then going over and using anti-static um, to make sure when I emboss we don't have any embossing powder where we don't want it and I have done some stamp surgery and cut apart our large 
uh, stamp set with the large dandelion and the small ones blowing off and I'm using them separately because I want to actually come in and use different colors of embossing powder so I'm just trying to get a good spread of the large dandelion making sure some come off the page and plenty on the page so I am using a gold embossing powder here and I'm just trying to make sure I've got good coverage give it a tap move the embossing powder around my cover and just tap off any excess and off camera I've tipped that excess powder back into the bottle to use again so here comes the magic where we melt our embossing powder and turns into that beautiful gold sheen that we love to see when we're embossing and you saw me there just making sure I heat from the back as well to make sure my card front stays flat now I'm going back in gently with the anti-static powder because I'm going to come in now with those tiny little dandelion pieces and uh, stamp those with embossing ink onto my card front you do need to be careful uh, when you're going back in with the anti-static powder that you've allowed the embossing powder you've just heated time to cool because you can smear it accidentally so going in I've got the little scattering of the dandelion pieces as well as that separate dandelion small dandelion there and I'm coming in with fine detail white embossing powder and I'll make sure I get a good spread all over my card panel and I'll give it a good shake and tap and then we can go ahead making sure I'm careful where I put my uh, reverse tweezers so I don't smear any of the embossing powder I've just placed on and the magic's happening we can see the embossing powder turn from that dull white to a bright clean crisp white image just making sure we've got it all and there it is our background paper finished okay now to go ahead and make the rest of card number 10 I've taken another panel of black card stock and I have embossed that with our embossing folder of the month I've then cut a diagonal piece off the top of the card and I'll glue that black paper straight down I've then also cut our pink embossed panel in half and I'm going to layer a strip of the gold foil paper from our kit just on the cut edge there of our pink panel. I'll then snip off the excess and then attach that to our card front. Now to make sure that our pink piece is level with our embossed piece I'm just popping some scraps of black cardstock underneath where the pink paper will go and that's just again to give it support and make sure we have um, enough backing there to raise the pink paper up over top of the black so I am now taking one of the ephemera pieces and it's a pretty one with the black dandelion and sentiment and I'm popped that up on some foam squares and I'm attaching that to some gold foiled cardstock I'm then going to glue that onto the center front of our card and that will be our card completed and I think it's quite really quite pretty with the black the gold and the white with the pink background there I then decided that I wasn't quite finished I wanted to round off the two diagonal corners and then our card is finished 
To start card number of 11, our bonus card, I've cut a circle of the grey cardstock and I've taken one of our stamp sentiments and I'm going to emboss that onto our uh, circle there for one of our focal points on the card. And because it is a very fine, delicate sentiment, I'm using fine detail black embossing powder. It just means that when you do heat emboss it, you'll get a finer, more refined finish with the detail embossing powder. So there it is, all embossed. Now, I am going to take some of the pieces of paper I've had left from uh, previous cards, including that pretty butterfly background paper, and I'm gluing that directly to the card and then we'll trim it. I've taken a piece of the embossed paper that we created and placed that onto the bottom. I've taken a piece of the striped paper left from a previous card and matted that onto grey cardstock as well. And I've put that going diagonally across our card front. I'm bringing in some glittery um, Love From Lizzie peel -offs and placing that along the edges of my grey strip there. And I'll use some of the small leftover pieces to finish off the lining of that grey cardstock. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to peel off our backing for our foam tape and I'm going to place our sentiment fairly close to centre. To finish the card, I'm going to bring in one of the pale pink um, dimensional butterfly stickers that matches back nicely with the pink colours in the uh, papers that we're using. And I'm also bringing in some uh, gold half pearls just to finish off and add a little bit more sparkle and bring some uh, emphasis to our sentiment there. I then decided to try adding some of our crystal nouveau drops with the glitter just along the body of our butterfly there and you'll see how that finishes in the photo and that's the end of all my cards so let's just have one quick last final look at all 11 cards I've made with this kit I still have lots left over so plenty more cards that can be made um, I think it's the same every month. There's still plenty of things left that we can use to make even more cards. And just showing you there, the final ones. And I don't think I made any landscape cards um, this time, which is unusual for me. I did make that one top folding card out of the cream cardstock in our kit that I turned into a card base for... Um, for that card and I had lots of fun doing something different with the use of the foundry wax and creating that embossed background on the pink card stock as well so I really hope you've enjoyed watching me experiment and create the cards this month if you have I would love to hear if you had a favorite card in the comments and I hope you come back and join me again soon bye bye for now